African black refugees sleeping on the ground, allowed to come to Canada, but welcomed by the streets, allowed to come to this great country, but allowed to sleep on the streets. This is deplorable, it's unacceptable, and we know that this is not who we are. So why we're here today is to remind all of us that we can do better, and we are a country, a country that focuses on inclusivity, on diversity, and understands that all of us, we all bring a certain beauty, uniqueness, power, and everything else to make this country great. So at this point, we would like to have our senior elders have their say in terms of what they feel, their message to us, and how we can do better. The governments, they, they can continue their conversations, but in the meantime, what are we doing for the people who are suffering and they're on the streets, sleeping in rain on the streets? We need to do something for them. So we are saying, while they have the talking, while they have the discussion, we need to get them off the streets. And that's why we're here. We need to get them off the streets today. So I would like now to turn the mic over to our incredible, iconic trailblazer, Jean Augustine, the first black member of parliament and the woman responsible for creating Black History Month. I won't say put your hands together, but you can put your hands together. But let's welcome and give the mic over to our elder trailblazer, Jean Augustine. So Jean, right in front of the mics for me, okay? Nice and loud, please, nice and loud. Can you just go, go back just a little? Just go back a little. Thank you, Gwen. I am so troubled. I am so troubled about the scene here. I'm so troubled by what I've seen over the last few weeks. I'm so troubled by what I've heard. This is not the Canada that we're building. This is not the Canada that speaks about diversity. This is not the Canada that speaks about respect for each other. This is not the Canada that get around tables to talk about the situation of refugees, the situation of people around the world who need Canadian help, Canadian assistance, and that we have a country where everyone is welcome and everyone is given an opportunity, an opportunity to prosper, an opportunity to reach their full potential, an opportunity to be and to have life a bit better than what they're leaving behind. I think it's important for us not to sit back. It's important for us not to allow this to happen. I've passed a few times and cars are driving by to look at the situation. I've had friends in international places who've seen pictures and have heard of the situation here and are asking, what is going on in Canada? What is going on in this city? I was a minister for multiculturalism. I was a minister for the status of women and the situation of women in this group, the situation of women who cannot find a place that they could be comforted as they work through different processes. I'm not here to talk about whose responsibility, whose money, whose funding. I'm here to say that as Torontonians, as Canadians, as Ontarians, we need to do better than this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jean. Thank you very much. So let me let me get you in here. Um, if you could move over a little bit. So now we'd like to um, hear from one of our other icons and trailblazers, Zanina Conde. She was the first black member of the provincial parliament, and she was also the first black cabinet minister. Her body of work is so impressive. And again, these are people 
who have dedicated not just one decade, not two decades, not three decades, not four decades, five decades, six decades of work to help to develop this country into the beautiful garden of all kinds of people representing all communities. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Zanina Conde. Well, good morning. Uh, I have to tell you that when I came down to see this, I was shocked. We have been listening for months about fires, about storms from every part of Canada and beyond. And immediately those people are taken into municipal buildings or into schools or into centers somewhere. And we have been hearing about refugees who have been coming to Canada. And I know from the friends that I've made that some of our Ukrainians who have been here have been taken into centers. And our people are on the street. Now, I am not an immigrant. I was born in this country, in this city, of immigrant parents. And we have always supported each other in being fair and expecting for each other what we have for ourselves and extending our gifts so that others could profit from them. And yet we have black people, let me be clear, black people sleeping on the street, women trying to cover themselves adequately while they sleep. And I must tell you, I am offended. This is not the Canada that I went to school and learned with. This is not the Canada that I taught hundreds and hundreds of children to be able to, do, to contribute to. This is not the Canada that I went to the University of Toronto and taught teachers how to teach so that they could make them welcome. This is not that Canada. And I want, no, no, no. I insist that my tax dollars be spent to give equal service to my people. And once again, I have to talk about my people in a country where I've been raised, in a city where I've been raised living with Italians and Jews and Ukrainians and white people and black people and people from all parts of this world. You have, we have allowed my people to be so disrespected. I will not stop talking about this. I will not rest until they get equity. Never. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. One second. One second. So, so here is the other interesting thing. We are interested in getting these beautiful our beautiful brothers and sisters off the streets today. We want the We want for them guys. now. <laughs> we want them off the streets today. All they're asking for in this great country, in this great city, is some place where all of them can be together while the governments talk and negotiate and do whatever it is. They have they should not be on the streets any longer. We put out an ask to this gentleman, which I'm sure all of you know of. Come here, Mohammed. We said he brought food yesterday, which was beautiful. We love your food. But I said, thank you for what you're doing in terms of feeding um, our community. But what we really need is a place where they could lay their heads is a place where there's shelter from the rain and the cold, mm -hmm. is a place where they can be temporarily, at least until the governments, they figure out what they want. And I asked you, are you prepared? Are you okay to pay for that? And what did you say? <laughs> I said we will for sure. Okay, and so you uh, come here and tell us, take the mic, and this is what we talk about Canadians. 
take the mic. Thank it's you. all about us helping to get to each other and, and, and working together. So thank you very much. Thank uh, you very much. I've been watching this for many days and weeks, and I was hoping that we'll see the government stepping up. Uh, and I'm not here to decide which level of government. I probably don't even know which level of government need to step up. They all need to step up. Someone has to do it, and they'll figure it out after. Uh, I just simply think that we have shown that we are able to help people. We were able, and I'm very happy to help the Ukrainian refugee. I was part of helping as well the Syrian refugees, and we can help these people, and we can help them immediately. And the difference of me hearing in the government and people texting me saying, Mohammed is going to take four or five days. The difference, those four or five days are many, many minutes for these people who are in the street. And we need to do it immediately. And I hear the voices of the people that want a permanent solution because you have to be in their shoes to understand. If you're going to go to another temporary solution, then another temporary solution, you're still feeling in the street and you can't build the life. And you know what, what I felt yesterday when I came here? I felt that we let them down. And we need to confirm to them that Canadian dream is alive. And Canadians are not OK. We are disappointed of all the government's level that they have not stepped up and stepped in to resolve it. And that's what I'm hoping to. So when I heard that, I said, I have tried this in 2017 in December when we put homeless in hotels because of the cold. And it was very difficult. So if we can find a place, I'm happy to start by pledging to pay for it and fundraise with all our great Canadian, every single one in this city. I know our city, I know our people. You guys all are great people. And you will come in and step in and resolve it. But most importantly, I'm really hoping that government will step in, resolve it, and immediately. Since yesterday, I've been thinking about it all night, even this morning, we have to find a proper solution, and we are able to. It's political will, and when I say let's fundraise, it'll become our will as Torontonian. As Canadian, do we want to find a real solution? Yeah. And by me saying that, I'm not underestimating the homelessness issue. I'm actually, this is another cause that will help us to shed a light on everyone in our city that doesn't have a roof above their head. But this one cannot wait now. Nor the other one should have waited. But we should really do something and do it all together. It's another opportunity. And look, a lot of good people in our governments, they would like to do the right thing. They just, I think, they need the encouragement of us watching them. And we're telling them now we are watching. But meanwhile, we can't wait. We can't ask these family. I heard there was three pregnant women. This is unacceptable. This is a shame on us, honestly, to be able to think about it. Three pregnant women sleeping on the street in our city. Like, we, sh we can do better. We should do better. And we will do better. And if you know anyone that has a property where we can yes. welcome them, yeah. please help us. To all universities and everyone that have dorms, please reach out. We're not asking you to do it for free. OK, but you can help. And if you can and you don't, well, it's shame on us. That's not the Canadian way. I came here very poor. Canadian gave me an opportunity. We can give it to these people, too. And we can be serious about it, not delay it. These people are tired from people coming here and talking. They want people that they're ready to do it. We are happy to do it. I'm ready to start fundraising. A lot of people have done this work before me. And, you know, Alexa and a lot of people like Lorraine, they have done a great job, all of you. You guys have done a great job, but it's time to actually finish it. It's time to actually get a roof above their head, whatever it takes. And in this city, when there is a cause, people show up. I promise you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much.